Okay, so this week's Raw emanated from just an hour, hour and a half north of me in Chicago, and I, for the life of me, could not summon up the courage or the conviction to want to travel up there to see the WWE live. So, we begin with Jericho to a raucous ovation. I was just there when you know, Jericho debuted there, and it was beautiful. Because a nice promo, he actually ends up calling down, effectively, calling down Owens. It's like, why'd you do it? Why'd you do it? Great segment. I recommend watching it. It's it's solid. It's a solid opening segment. They have a match now at Mania for the U.S. Championship. Cool. He goes down there. Owens is beating down on, uh, <clears throat> on Jericho. We don't stop there. No three Bob. Joe attacks Jericho. Which then, of course, leads to what you're probably thinking. Yep, it actually leads to Joe having a match with Jericho and Owens having a match with Sami Zayn. There you go. There you go. So, Zayn, Owens, nice back and forth. These two guys know each other well. Shorter than most of their normal matches, which, you know, I'm fine with. You know, you can't always do super long matches with these guys. That's okay. Pow Powerbomb steals the victory. Later on in the night, Jericho and Joe had their match. Which means Jericho's chicken kicking off his bucket list. He got to take on Daniel Bryan in WWE ring. AJ Styles in WWE ring. He's wrestled both Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit at the same time, WWE ring. He beat Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock in the same night in an E ring. Now he's taking on Joe in an E ring. And he's going to take on Kevin Steen in an E ring. And he faced El Generico. I think, and he's also taking on CM Punk. Effectively, he's taking on the best of Ring of Honor in an E ring. How's the match end? Joe chokes out Jericho on the outside and wins my count out. I'm cool with that. That works. It's a point across. Coquita Clutch is dangerous. I can live with that. We get a re-match, kind of, for the tag balls with Enzo and Big Cass taking on the club with Cesaro and Sheamus on the outside just standing there. So I wonder if something happens. Cesaro, which makes him get in the ring, which forces a disqualification. So now they're going to face next week. Because they've only got three teams. Oh, and the New Day destroyed the Shining Stars. <clears throat> Surge of Tag Division. For the women's side of things, Foley was in the ring with Bailey because it's a women's segment. And he's like, Who are you going to face at WrestleMania? It like, doesn't matter how you got there, it's that you got there. I'm like, yeah, We need to quit glossing over the fact that, you know, we are now effectively seeing the Chris, oh, the Chris and Kevin show with Sasha Bailey. How we defeat this near unstoppable person? If we work together, we can do it. And Bailey's face promo. I hear promo style is designed to be kind of awkward and corny because she's a fan turned wrestler, so it makes sense. Sasha's face stuff is awkward. Of course, now it's Women's Month, so they're going to try to shoehorn in some sort of women's bit. Which is ironic they talked about Trish and Lita main eventing Raw like 15 years ago. And they're having these great matches. While glossing over the fact that there's this really bizarre like 10 year gap. Where women's matches were the bathroom breaks. But back then, they weren't. So they gloss over that like 10 year like blank spot. Where women's wrestling mattered, then it didn't and now it matters again. So Charlotte came down, Trish made Stephanie come down, she made CM Punk chance come down and she's like, you're just like Punk, you're a bunch of losers. She made more CM Punk chance happen. And then Foley was like, well Sasha deserves being be a match at WrestleMania for a triple threat. Like, you should take on, she should take on Charlotte. Steph's like, a great idea, however. Sasha take on Bailey if she wins the triple threat. And Sasha and Bailey had a 
oddly paced match. Good, but just felt like they were just off. Sasha wins by a bank statement with a pseudo assist from Charlotte. So it's triple threat match. Just like last year. Okay. Women's division was absolutely on fire last year. Now they've moved that fire closer to the dumpster. And it's just, they've got some good talent. It's just not, just not clicking. You have three hours, you should be able to do at least more than one women's segment. Like, if they get a segment in a match, you should be able to do a lot more than that with who you have for a roster. Now to the cruiserweight side, where people actually have characterizations that are given direction. Swan took on Neville. Nice match, brutal match. I liked the time when Neville throws Swan like head first into like the into the the pseudo Titantron apron thing. Looked wicked. Neville gets the victory. Gets interviewed after by Austin Aries. They get into it a little bit. Austin Aries is coming back and he's gunning for that title. Simple, easy. I still kind of laugh at they show his video package. And Austin's like, that's a great package. And Corey Graves goes right into, it's an amazing package that you have. It's just, it's just that quick little, ha. yeah, that's right. We totally made a junk joke. Right here, in Chicago, Illinois. But then not to be outdone, Akira Tozawa murdered somebody with that snap German suplex, calls up the Brian Kendrick. He's in the face of a 205 Live. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Your cruiserweight division has got multiple storylines going on simultaneously? And they've got one show and part of another show. They're coherent and they're simple. It's all wrestling fans can really ask for. <clears throat> so, Strowman wanted to call out Roman for the main event. Alright. Those guys will kill each other. I can deal with that. Strowman's in the ring, cuts a bit of a promo, which then makes Undertaker come down. Strowman looks at him. Undertaker gives him a little nod like, this is when you leave the room. You kind of gave him a message received and then left. Then Strom then a Roman came down and was like, This is my yard now, big dog. Chokes on my Undertaker. Undertaker leaves. Okay. But Goldberg also had a spot as well. Goldberg is at the first hour main event. And the crowd's chanting CM Punk and he's like, I hear you. Then Heyman comes down and he's like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to shake your hand. I didn't come alone. Lesnar comes down, does the whole, like, shake my hand. Shake my hand, Bill. Shake my hand. Shake my hand, Bill. Bill does it. F5, which I think is the first bump we've seen Goldberg take since he's been back. Except for the time he ran it and Rusev and fell down. And I was like, okay. They're progressing things after it almost seemed like Fastlane was like what we have to get through? I will just get through some stuff and we'll kind of build up to like a couple of matches. We'll just get it done. And okay, it's raw. Now it's time to put the pedal to the metal and actually run towards WrestleMania. 